morning everyone and welcome to Thursday's advanced class. Let me first of all shout out Lunar Beaches Crypto that is in the house and he's not feeling well. He's got COVID, he just mentioned it here. So brother, hopefully you do get better and that just makes 10, 20, 30 times more. I am 30 times more grateful for you stopping by, spending time with us here and I, I understand how you're feeling. I did got a little bit of COVID and it wasn't that bad though. And Ginger, uh, homemade Ginger D actually played out big part of, of me getting better. I just chop it up, put it into a, a pan, uh, boil it for a couple of minutes, and then strain it, add a little bit of uh, lime and what is this thing, honey? And then just shake it up. Uh, and sometimes I needed to just kind of like water it down a little bit. Other than that, it actually played out big, big, it was a big deal for me to, to get better and back in the game. So hopefully it does work for you. This is not medical advice at all. I am not a medicine guy. I, this is just something that I, I, it's been doing, done on my family for ages. So I just replied, all right? So <laughs> it does, it actually, it does. It, it, is, it is a pretty good one. <laughs> no, no, I am not. <laughs> I am not a doctor. I have nothing to do by with medicine. I even faint when I see blood. So yeah, I'm a little uh, cat. Let's just call it that. I'm a little cat when talking about needles and, and blood. Yeah, just to be honest, drinking whiskey and get smashed. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> I love that one. Good evening. What's up, guys? So let's get started today. But acknowledging what we're going to be taking a look at today, uh, I wanted to cover uh, surviving the bull market. <laughs> and that is if you shorted, uh, the, basically, the, the sorry, if you, yeah, if you shorted uh, a weight up and then now you're just struggling to get out of that, that short, now that we are starting to retrace, maybe you are still alive on that short, uh, let's take a look at a couple of options that you can start doing to survive that retracement. And depending on your situation, you might want to call out that short uh, and also, or just scale it down or just wait it out. That depends on many things, but mostly depends on you and your wallet. We're gonna be visiting a couple of options there. And Lunar Beach is crypto. If you have any anything that you want to share, please, please let me know. I'll be really, really glad for you to to come up with uh, your knowledge and also let us know what's what's uh, what if you have been on that situation and how you survived that short. Give me just guys one. Uh, perfect, perfect. Give you just guys one second. Here we go. Perfect. All right. I have a little bit too much caffeine today on my blood, so bear with me. I might mumble a little bit more than usual, but I guarantee there's gonna be a worth session. So let's roll it and let's go to the charts. All right, guys, so it seems like I don't have charts. I have music, so if you like the music that I played out, in the beginning, this is it, giving it credits. I don't push it into YouTube because that will be demonetized. Uh, the channel is just for you guys to hear, just spreading also the love on that uh, music that I like. And let's visit a couple of things and then set up the worst case scenario for ourselves, all right? So also guys, remember this is not a, a crypto exclusive channel, but I'm not there yet fully developed my reading mind strategy. So you do need to let me know what you want me to take a look at right here. And also, just so you know, if you are new in the space, uh, make sure that you participate right here because just by typing your earning points and those points, uh, you can transform them into trading view coins that you can use to pay your next upgrade or maybe your next month or your next membership. So uh, we have uh, given, I believe today was given Kefib a couple of those coins. So shout out to Kefib. I don't know. I don't think he is in here, but most likely he is going to be in the next class. Today, we have a double class for our friends on the other part of the world, on of the globe that are, are not able to join this class. We're going to be visiting the same topic uh, that today. So stick around. And also, if you want to double class, that'll be awesome. That'll be awesome. All right, so let's move into the charts in here. Adeo, uh, what's up? Welcome, welcome. Uh, also, let me very, very fast shout out Verance in here. 
So let's get started, Pro. How Pro Ho Habit? What's up, brother? I've seen you a couple of times. I would love you to participate a little bit more because you can earn so much more points in there. And I see you on every single class. So shout out for you, brother. And welcome. Also, I do see uh, here Chris Barron. What's up, Baron? Welcome, JCL. What's up? That's the pilot. What is up, brother? As always, Luna Beach is crypto. What's up, brother? Welcome. Great to have you here. And also, we have, let me see if we have any other veteran in the house uh, that I'm maybe skipping. Here we go. We have someone else. I don't believe so. So for the new members or that they're making their way up into the variants, guys, participate, participate, participate. Doesn't matter if you know it or don't know it. The important thing is that you type right here because you earn points. So also, hopefully you guys enjoy today's session because it's going to be a field of knowledge. Uh, let's see, legend, new here, welcome brother, welcome. By the way, for the new members uh, that are trying to get started, uh, I do have uh, my own classes that are in the additional content, important classes, watch video number three, and then watch video number one. They're slightly outdated on where the positioning and things are, Nonetheless, the name is exactly the same and they work exactly the same. Do not be deceived just because one word is in another place right there. It is, it is basically the same. I do advise you to take a look at those ones because they're packed, full pack of tips and tricks. And I also go on over the three-letter strategy that I teach and I personally use. All right. Uh, anytime, anytime. Also, what's the, 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 tutor the tutorials? on the chart prime tutorials uh, let me point you out here uh let's do chart prime tutorials here we go and also the additional content here we go this is it so you just click in there it's going to take you right to those sections and then you can start uh acknowledging that uh that knowledge absorbing that knowledge all right so let too much talk and let's go into the action right now Perfect. So let's get started right here. This is one of my personal strategies, guys. So what I'm trying to uh, figure out here is basically the next upcoming movement. And that upcoming movement, it's going to be, uh, yeah, it's going to be uh, when I do see a couple of signals. Those signals, remember that they are based on a trend. Remember, higher highs, all right, and higher lows. I always go backwards. I don't know why. So higher highs higher lows all right what does that make please let me know on the side on the chat so i can know what am i looking at that when i do have series of higher highs and higher lows anybody just give it a try if you don't know that's fine that's fine i'm trying to get you talking all right so what is it higher highs and higher lows perfect bullish trend exactly and then what is the fail point of a bull trend anybody there's two answers that we've been talking about. Uptrend, yes, absolutely. But what is the fail now of, a, of that uptrend? When we start making lower highs, right? But we haven't yet make a lower low. So this is telling me that the bull trend is losing momentum, right? Why? Because if I draw a trend line from top to top and then project it up here, I do have, because I am in a bullish trend, all right, I do have the projected target. All right, let's take a look at that. If I project this one, the next target should be at least close to this area to make a higher high. Would you guys agree? I mean, we can even see it here. We have high, higher high, and then last higher high that did not met the previous trend line. All right, let's take a look at that. You see that? And after not meeting the, tr that, uh, the trend line, usually we know that we're losing momentum. What happened right there? Flip of the ribbon, break to the zero line, bearish divergence, right? And then going down. So we can also see this repetitive over and over and over. Look at those. Where it was supposed to be the next high. It was supposed to be all the way there, but we fall short. And then we made what? A lower low basically going down right there do you guys see what i'm talking about please let me know if that is clear enough or not 
all right why am i explaining this to you guys so you can uh, take a look at or dive into my own strategy here again this is a strategy on process but this is the way that we test it in the markets all right so the thing that i'm talking about or trying to look for it is a triangular pattern why this is called my head and shoulder lines let me show you something interesting if i drew it in here look at that where was supposed to be my next target all the way up here but it didn't it went all the way down here all right so as i draw it then i have a triangle right here right and i call this uh, my head and shoulders lines why because this resembles a head and shoulders all right with a beautiful neckline and also a uh, a breakout pattern right there so uh as you can see it doesn't always give you a head and shoulders but will always give you a neckline all right that is important uh, for your total knowledge at this point i do see top 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 and top and that's why i draw this line here and i also i am acknowledging that i have a big top and another big top so i'm going to be drawing those two but what i always can predict it's going to be my neckline in here and since i already have this hidden here and, and bouncing from that's why i draw this train line which is being respected right now you see that so as you can see i am expecting a possible retracement if i have for can you guys tell me what does for stands for again trying to get you to, to look at all right let's go in avx then a hey, measure pain what's up measure pain in the house what's up leap off the ribbon absolutely yeah hello dude what's up yes avid looks good good soon my aim to enter at 35.1 and 34.1 all right hey what's up brother um let me do something here please guys give me a second sorry for this mm, here we go i just was doing something uh important here so thank you for your patience uh let's move into the next one then let's take a look at it here so already have a resistance line or a trend line to the downside and a trend line to the upside as you can see it doesn't it is not actually a, a head and shoulders but it resembles one so it could be shoulder head and then a possible shoulder right down here if we are flipping down there nonetheless i'm also looking at this as a possible short shoulder big head and another shoulder right down there i can trade the inside of this triangle but most likely i will be trading the breakout either on the neckline or in this breakout pattern line which if i break to the upside i will be losing the head and shoulder formation and most likely i will be going for the next target just like it happened right here all right when i lost this head and shoulder line look at that breaking through that line and then going to visit the next predicted target this could be the same pattern we still don't know and that is why we have a oh let's lock it and we have an alert in both lines or in three lines right here right there and right here or let's add this one uh, oh it's 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 right there the clock it's on that one perfect so let's take a look at what else could it be happening we could be going up basically just going for a retracement and breaking through or we can be flipping down my oscillator will be decisive for me to enter on that trade so far we're still bullish because we have a prime score very high and our consolidation is telling us that we are consolidating so we could be going down all the way down there without breaking the bullishness all right when i start getting worried is when we start breaking this uh this neckline that's when i start kind of like looking for farther positions to the downside and for that i'm going to be looking at my indicators so if we break to a downside i'll be looking at this area where i have confluence what is confluence it is the met up or where uh, many tr um, indicators meet at the same spot or the same area it doesn't need to be exactly the same price all right so i have an x-ray order block right here and this dynamic reactor coming in strong basically giving me some support as soon as i break that neckline let's take a look at something else i have a channel it's a little bit messy but as you can see that channel is giving me the base right here at where is my neckline so i don't really need to uh, do this strategy i just need to turn on my patterns and let's just trust on my patterns so you can see same structure we're seeing tops and bottoms tops and bottoms and right now we're hovering on the center line right here that it goes for a resistance so 
Now let's out, add some predictive ranges. Here we go, those predictive ranges, I'm also gonna be combining them with some support and resistance. Let's see where is my support and resistance. Oh, I'm on all time highs. That's why I cannot take my support and resistances because they're all plotting down below. Predictive ranges, as the name implies, are predictive, right? So they're using predictive mathematics to tell you where is most likely for the price to be engaged and also to be hovering over and also take some big movements. Usually we look at the uh, purple line as a breakout section or a big rejection section. When we break the purple line, we generate a new set of predictive ranges. And in most of the cases, like, uh, I don't know, over 70 or 80% of the cases, we go find the blue line after breaking the purple line right there. So as you can see, look at that purple line with my top predictive uh, trend line. And also if I turn on my range, you'll see that the top of the range is both between this, uh, this gray predictive uh, range and this purple predictive range. So this is going to be my next target if we break to the upside, all right? If I break to the downside, you already know that I'm finding some support at the bottom right here, all right? And then looking at this area right there when I'm channeling between the purple and my uh, order block right down there. So let's move into something else. I did have a request on AVAX, if I'm not uh, mistaken. Let's take a look at, yes. Uh, let's take a look at AVAX then. And on AVAX, we'll take a look at the main purpose of today's class, which is surviving a short, misplaced short position, all right? Also guys, let me now tell you something that always, especially on crypto markets, shorting, it is way, way, way much more dangerous, all right, than longing. Uh, that is because, I mean, how far up could a coin go? Can you guys tell me? Yes, I mean, to the infinite, right? We don't know. And maybe, maybe, and I'm going to say this because there's a ton of it. Yes, to Jupiter, absolutely. I mean, maybe you might recall this happened to you. Uh, I don't know. I'm just at the top of my head. But let's say that you are trying to trade, especially when you are a beginner, you're trying to trade a meme coin. And you said, oh, look at that. This meme coin, this Pepe coin, it has a ton of... Yes, <laughs> it has a ton of resistance right here. It's been going like crazy and it's a meme coin. Who's gonna take it seriously, right? Let's short it. And guess what? It made its way to the top 20 on volume. And you are like, what? I mean, how could that be, right? That is just to prove that the sky is the limit. The space is the limit, right? The moon is the limit. Jupiter is the limit. There is no... And number to the upside. But if you short it, no, sorry, if you long it, what is the lowest that one coin can go? And let's take the example of something like, uh, like Luna, right? Exactly. It usually never goes below zero, except if it's oil, right? <laughs> that shit, you got paid to get some oil at 2021, if I'm not mistaken, right? 2021, 2022, yeah, my negative 40, exactly. Spartan, uh, spastic spider, hey, what's up, Veran? Welcome to the class. Great to see you around. So, yes, there is nothing else below zero. So, let's just say that you have a million dollars and you set a position of 50 bucks for longing it. It can go down and maybe you decide to put, to average your entry by going lower, all right? So you average down, it keeps going down, you average your position and just go keep going down, right? Keeps going down, you average your position and then your position entry gets averaged down as you start putting money into it, right? Basically, the only thing is that your leverage is not crazy high, right? That you do have an exit plan, that's what a very important to use a stop loss, right? It is not smart just to stop, keep pouring in money in something that is not sustainable, especially if you are over leveraged, all right? Sometimes it's just, it is hard to let go, but we need to, all right? Then when the asset gets to zero, like Luna, 
I mean, you can keep averaging down as it hovers down there, and whenever, by any freaking reason, it just pumps up, you can get out of that trade. But if start pumping, you don't know what is the limit. There is no top, there is no roof, there is no limit. So maybe we never get back at those prices. Like for example, let's imagine that you enter at 17K, you shorted Bitcoin at 17K. Right now, what is it? What What is the Bitcoin price at this moment? I mean, we got it right there, right? Let's just uh, turn it on and, oh, I got AVEX. And Bitcoin price, it is at 51,500, right? So, I mean, and who knows what's the top or what is the limit to Bitcoin. So if you just keep pouring money there, uh, it's gonna be a hard pit to swallow, right? This is gonna be a, a correction in next three months opportunity, but uh, I don't know. How are you so short, brother? Let me ask you that question. I mean, with all due respect, how can you know? Cycling, just like the previous cycle that was nothing like the, the ones that we've been seeing. So let me ask you a question. After that, would you all still trust on cycling? I mean, I'm trying to ask you these questions because this is a statement with that sureness of, of, I mean, with being so sure, it's not bad, all right? Do not make it, don't, do not let it be, I'm not 100% sure, perfect, yes, nothing is 100% sure, right? Just be careful, just be careful with the information that you believe and also the information that you get. Let me let me tell you this. I uh, my predictions, guys. Have you seen my prediction for Bitcoin 2024? Sorry, 2025. Exactly. I started on 500k, right? Guys, you should watch that video, by the way. And then my higher prediction it's at 1 million. Exactly. Perfect. Yes, 1.4 million, right? Yeah, it was something around 1.4 million from 500k to 1.4 million. Yes. That was my prediction based on my own calculations. And I, I went nuts with geometrics. I actually pulled out calculations on that. <laughs> like, for real, I just got so sucked in. And I was like, holy shit, right? But that doesn't mean that I'm just gonna be going all like 100% in, like 100K uh, leverage, right? And just hoping for the best, right? I mean, that's what my math is telling me. Usually, usually my math is correct. I might be making a mistake and then I need to look at that, right? And also one friend of mine asked me, so should I hold for 500K? And I said, hell no, I'm not even, I'm, I'm not doing that, right? I mean, my prediction is that and I'm gonna hold a little bit. In fact, my savings, my retirement savings are on Bitcoin. So if it gets to 500K, they can still remind on Bitcoin until I decide to, to retire. That's it, that is it, right? I don't care, but my trading wallet will be managed differently. And that will be managed day on day, hour by hour, right? <laughs> and as we get higher. So just so you know, just so you know, I already have my target set, basically uh, 60K going out a little bit, 100, there you go, pro habit, 100K, taking a little bit out, then 250K, and then 500K. I always, always hold a little bit, right, on Bitcoin, not selling it, on trading, and always, I always, 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 always hold a little bit of USDT or uh, um, USDC, all right, for dry powder for trading. Why? Because if we have a black swan, either way, I do still have that dry powder, either Bitcoin or uh, crypt, or sorry, or, or fiat, right? Does that make sense? And by the way, just make sure you know, you are aware how much money is BlackRock getting into Bitcoin. Just make sure you, you tap on that, all right? But to be fair, Martin G, uh, let me see, let me see. It, it was you, right? That, that you predicted uh, that we're gonna have a correction. By the way, but by the way, I mean, I don't want to be harsh on you because I do also think that we're gonna have a correction. In fact, my target's at 43K to get started and then 38K to join the next one. And that's it, those positions are open. Right? Also, major pain, I believe that you also have some targets down there, right? What is your target there? Uh, 
uh, what is it? But five, five, what? Five thousand BTC on on a day OTC on the exchange. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Thirty-eight to thirty-four. Look at that. He's even lower than me, right? And that's fine. That's fine. The thing is that you have a plan B, right? In case everything goes wrong, you have that leverage for yourself. And I'm not talking about the trading leverage. I'm talking about having spare money to, to use. Not your rent money, not your food money, not the school of your children's money, not your wife's money, all right? Make sure you know that. Well, that's, that's for me. By the way, not financial advice. That is the way that you do it. And also, guys, this is an important thing to do. I know we're not touching on, on, the, on the charts that much because we need to set some basis before we go on how to survive the market, all right? And that's going to be very, very important. Sometimes we need to take a step back and on the advanced classes, talk about no, what nobody's talking about, right? This is not another influencer's class, right? This is not me. Hey, I told you so, right? This is not me. I'm not. I'm getting my Lamborghini. No, 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 no. I don't even. I don't even own a car at this point, right? Just so you know. Just so you know. Well, I do. I do. But they both are in the mechanics, <laughs> so you know. Nonetheless, I'm very satisfied. Very satisfied on my own. Uh, wallet in my own financial statement, right? I'm a very simple person, by the way. I'm a very simple person. Just get me some fried chicken, get me some bacon, and give me something to move around, maybe a hat over my head, and that's it. And some Bitcoin, please. That's it. I'm just happy with that. And a crazy good woman that I love and I do have by my side. So that's it. That's as easy peasy as I live my day on day. Why I'm telling you this? Because if you are in that position that you need to survive the market, you might be needing to step back, all right, and find your ground, right? I mean, uh, I'm going to be telling you a little bit of my story, and that is when I lost it all. When I lost it all, I decided to jump into, into crypto. Thanks, God. Uh, I, was a, I was a very good CGI architect, right? I, I'm, I'm still, I am. <laughs> all, right. all right, well, that's the ones to be seen, right? I'm still on. But, uh, I mean, I was big in the industry when I was located. I was doing great. And I had, uh, I mean, I had the luck or uh, the hard work, right? And the financial um, uh, freedom to improve my equipment, right? I was, I had blade servers, uh, multiple processors. Uh, I mean, Damn, I almost fried the, the electrical thing on my office once, right? Because of how many uh, high-end computers and GPUs I had. So I decided just to start mining in the nights, right? Let's just cut the power of half, right? I mean, I'll, I'll mine, not full blasting anything. But yeah, I mean, turn on AC for a couple of hours at night where it's not too much heat and start building up my crypto wealth that way. When I lost it all, I still had some crypto right there that saved my butt, right? So I decided to jump into uh, crypto trading, all right? So just so you know, guys, I'm always looking to have a plan A and plan B, all right? Uh, full disclosure, my plan A and my other plan A right now at this point, it is a chart prime and trading. And my plan B now uh, that I went to college for, it is architecture. So right now I'm making architecture uh, just for fun. And also I want to say that uh, one of my, my designs won an award right here on Cosmo. So I, I'm very proud of that and shout out for um, the client. Uh, I mean, of course, she built it up the way it was supposed to. So big love there, big love. So, uh, and I'm doing it now for fun. Now my main uh, income, it is trading in chart prime, right? So I do have two plan A's, right? And one plan B. So just so you know, I'm always, I come from a family uh, where everybody has been, um, always grinding through stuff, right? So I always learned that there's going to be ups and downs in life, and that is no exception with crypto. So be prepared psychologically when you get hit, and you need to go back to the basis, because when I lost it all, I got depressed. 
I got to press two times. When I lost it all, and then the second time when I blew one of my biggest account on cryptos, right? On crypto. So oof, that even gave me the chills, guys. Still I'm still pretty emotional about it, right? So be prepared, guys. Always, always, always uh, you know, use stop loss, please. And at some point you'll need to work your skills out. And this is what this class is all about. So let's jump in here because too much talk. Let's take a look at AVAX and just wrap it up with the strategy that I've built over time. All right. So AVAX, here we go. Let's take a look at AVAX. Let's pull it up. And most likely I'm going to get rid of everything that I have. Oh, I wouldn't like that. Let's have, in fact do another AVAX. All right. But so far I am below the dynamic react. Sorry, the zero lining here on the oscillator, which means that I am mainly bearish. I don't have enough momentum to keep pushing to the upside. All right. Where is the price located based on the dynamic reactor? This is my dynamic reactor. Am I above or below dynamic reactor? And what does that mean? Don't have a job, no more, definitely stressful. But I try to see if it's a blessing and just try to uh, work on my skills more. JCL, absolutely, everybody has a different success story, right? Uh, the most that I can do is share with you the details of mine. So you can avoid doing the same mistakes, but also bend it, twist it, and make it your own so you can do what I also did correctly and apply it to your own situation, right? So that is the best that I can do. That's why I'm always, or that's what, that's what I as transparent as I can, right? Um, and also talked about my personal experiences so you can learn from the good and the bad and take your own choices uh, or decisions right there. All right, uh, bottom, so we are bearish. Yes, we are below the dynamic reactor. Dynamic reactor, it is a high volume zone and that whole high volume zone is usually hard to break, either when we're above it or when we are below it. All right, so let's take a look at that and let's see right here. And look at that, since we broke above, I mean, are you gonna tell me that we did not try to break into the downside? until we finally did, right? Yes, we have a fake out, but again, look at that, how many times we tried to break to the upside until we did, all right? And now we're back below. So that usually tells us that we're bigger. So it's not about the breakout. Let me zoom in because I was expecting to bounce out of this area. What do I have on that area? Oh, it, ooh, it isn't. I think it was my order block. Let me let me bring it up. Let's see. Uh, here we go. Perfect. It was my trend assistance. All right. My predictive range, and if I'm not mistaken, a multi-time frame support resistance, which is not working at this point because it's off. Oh yeah. I don't know why I turned it off. Everything is off in here. My dynamics pro. Let's turn it off. Let's let's do that. Uh, so, all right, um, what is it, what is, what is it? Trend lines speak, yes, that's fine, liquidity zones. Where are my support and resistances? I'm missing them. Oh, here is, I'm just so blind. All right, support and resistance, let's bring it back up. Extended, oh, but that is all right on extended note. Let's do, uh, yeah, let's leave it like that. And then also multi time frame one day in local. Let's go instead of extended, let's try to do mid term right there. And let's zoom out. Oh, I see them now. So we are all the way up here and big resistance at the top, big support at the bottom. All right. So, so far I'm in the middle. That is time for me to wait unless I do follow my next strategy. Look at that. It worked perfectly. This zone right there is not about the breakout. It's about the retest and off we go. We, our prime square is also bearish, and I'm looking for FOR, so flip of the ribbon to the downside. This flip of the ribbon already happened, it was right on spot. I mean, I could even go a little higher, but I call it right on spot, all right? And then going for the retest, and off we go, like we can see over and over and over. Let's take a look at that. So, for example, it's not about the breakout, it's about the retest, and off we go. All right, it's not about the breakout, it's about the retest, and off we go. Let's take a look at the other way around when we break to the upside. Well, right here, it's not about the breakout, it's about the retest, and off we go. And I'm talking about the dynamic reactor, all right? So just beware, it doesn't always happen, when, but when it does, it is pretty freaking awesome, and also happens more than it doesn't happen. Does that make sense? Please let me know. 
All right, let's do again an AVEX, and then let's wrap it up. I do have another one of AVEX here. Let's clean it up, all right? Oh, there we go. There was a good one. Look at that short. By the way, I don't know. We set up this short previously, but I did not close it in public. And I mean, I really should have uh, taken it on it, right? Because look at that beautiful entry. Nonetheless, nonetheless, you can now see right here. Oh, and I got it right here uh, figured out. So this was my max profit right here that I was shut down on the other one. I have also my predictive range and I have my prime train assistance. That's why this area was circled. Nonetheless, let's just clean this up and you know what, let's add that one and let's remove the other one. Let's work on the other one. Evex, perfect. Let's go this one and remove this one. There we go, much better and clean everything up. Perfect. Let's just say that we said, oh, look at that, breaking the previous high, we're going to the moon, right? And then, I mean, you start looking for short opportunities. You know what, that is a horrible example. Let's go even farther down, here we go. Let's go somewhere like, there we go, here. We're going for resistance. We already have overextended a lot. We have a ton of air, right? We are flipping down. I mean, why could it go wrong? I have a reversal pattern, right? But remember, you are above the zero line, right? And you need to wait for a confirmation. So it did not happen and it kept going up. So let's just say that you enter for a short right there, all right? And then you set up your stop loss there and then you're aiming for your very first support, which is where these two sides are, right? That is usually what had happened to me in the past, especially when I was new, all right? Let me read you guys because I do see that I have, I have a question if weekly candle is bullish, but daily and hourly, uh looks bearish as hell does that mean anything important to you not really uh <laughs> well yes and no uh, i mean what can you predict out of one single candle that is an important question what can you predict out of one candle nada <laughs> will will i mean that's a tricky question i would also say that nada right <laughs> that nothing right but we need to also bear in mind that we have bullish engulfing, bearish engulfing. We have a morning star. We have, uh, you know, like uh, evening stars. Uh, we have doji candles. So, yes. I mean, I mean, I will always say it, German news. I don't know that one, brother. I don't, I haven't heard about that one. Let me let me investigate. That's gonna be one of my of my homeworks. Uh, my personal homework. Thanks for that. Hey, Major Sergeant, what's up, brother? Welcome, veteran. And let's see. I can predict a lot from one candle. I can predict exactly how much money I'm going to lose. Oh, my God. And by the way, I love that answer. I love that answer because when you jump into the trade, you first need to know how much you're willing to lose, right? Because when you lose it, you don't get, I mean, devastated, right? But I mean... That is funny, yeah, yeah. Little rich descriptor, but I do see the gold behind uh, the rusty cover of the of the comic cover there. I mean, that is actually a very important comment. I loved it. Yes. So let's say. Uh, oh, by the way, let me let me finish that one up. All right, how much can you predict out of one candle? Mostly nothing, right? Mostly nothing, or nothing that is for. Nothing is for sure, but I usually go for at least three points of confluence before jumping into a trade, right? So look at one candle, that is one single point of confluence, and that is only if the candle has closed, right? All right, how many hours there is in a month? That is a homework, brother. Or give it a guess. Martin G, how many hours there are in a month? Is that for real? I don't know the answer. Is that, is that for real? Oh, I thought you did the calculations. <laughs> Seven four seven hundred and forty four. I love it, love it, love it. That is much more like it. Uh, yeah, but I mean, I actually thought that was like five million something, but yeah, that, now that I think of it, yes, I would say for one million candles, yeah. So there's, but yes, but uh, Master Sergeant, but do you do have a strategy 
on sniping on lower time frames, but looking for higher time frame support and resistances, right? But I mean, and that's and that's because you already have dominated that art, and that's exactly what I'm going to. So, like, it, that that's what I ask you: how many hours there are into into a month? Why? Because let's just figure this one out. Let's go to the one hour, right? Let's go to a bullish trend. This for me, all the way, and let's let, let me let me do this. Let me clear everything up. This is important. That's why I, I'm making the break to explain this. All right, for me, this is a bullish trend, right? For me, this is a bearish trend, all right? Bearish trend and then bullish trend. Would you guys agree on that? 100%, perfect, yes, perfect, all right. How many candles there are in those trends? Let's measure them. And I'm not gonna go super exact because that is not the point. Let's just measure, for example, from here to here. There is 194 94 bars, right? That is 194 hours out of the, the what, the 700, so basically, on one monthly candle, you can have bullish, bearish, bullish, bearish, bullish, up to six times or five times. So you can go up and down in one monthly candle. So that is, I mean, for me, that is telling me nothing. But if you're looking at monthly support and resistances, bandle, uh, candle patterns on the monthly, to look for measured movements on the hourly, that is the way to go. That is what SM uh, Master Sergeant it is doing. And please correct me if that is incorrect, Master Sergeant. But so far, I strongly believe that that is exactly what he's doing, using a crazy lower time frame and a crazy higher time frame to set up crazy movements based on that. You are correct. Perfect. Thank you. So, Martin G., one single candle on monthly against hourly, you're missing out on so much information. You need much more. What a structure, support resistance on bigger on higher time frames, and pinpoint entries on lower time frames. Does that make sense? Did that answer your question, brother? Let me know. And I'm taking and prolonging that far because today is advanced class, right? And I really want to jump in in what you guys are needing right now or your questions are and taking, you know, like going in depth to answer them. Yes, thank you. Could you please explain how to predict trend reversal on lower time frames? This is exactly the same thing on, that is not point, that is our, right, let's go for pieces. The exact same thing, the exact same way that you predicted on one minute, one hour, two hours, five hours, one month, one year, one billion years, exact the same thing. You look for crazy resistance, crazy confluence for shorts, Crazy support, crazy confluence support for lungs. I usually go for at least uh, three points of confluence down for a long, three points of confluence up for a short. Does that answer your, your question? Also, it is 10.58. We are at two minutes of ending the class, and I still need to explain how to get out of a losing short. So in that class, I actually go over that class on the pre, on the uh, additional content, important classes, class number one at the end of that class. I even go candle by candle to explain to you. So go visit that uh, video, and that is a two-hour video explaining everything that you need to know. Martin G is typing, what's up, brother? It's basic Spartan. What's up, brother? And let's take a look at now at those how to survive the, sh the short, all right? I will not be tackling any other uh, question because this is important. And there are a couple of things that I will need just to fly by now to answer, all right? Or to explain. So at this point, and this usually happens when I forget or I, when I was a rookie, right? Or a newbie, sorry. Uh, and then I said, oh, it's gonna stop me out. Let's move the stop loss to the next resistance, right? All right, why? Because it's coming down. And yeah, it, now it's coming down. Yeah, woo, I'm gaining. I knew it. It's going to make me a millionaire. Boop. Back again at the same point. Yeah, just, let's, just, let's just move it slightly up. Let's just move it slightly up. Let's just throw a little bit more money there, all right? 
There we go. I knew it. I knew it. it's going back down. It's going back down. It's going back down. I knew it. I'm a prophet. Yes, I nailed it. You just nailed it twice. You're against the odds. You are trading like that, brother. You are not paying attention to the signals. What are the signals? Higher highs, higher lows, all right? So first of all, first of all, forget that you're in a trade, right? Change of time frame if you need to. Invert your charts, whatever you need to do to look at it differently, right? And use a stop loss and don't move it. Because if you're gonna keep moving your stop loss, I mean, what are you using stop loss on the first time, right? There's another thing that I'm gonna touch in a, in a little bit more, and you guys need to take this with tweezers, and this is not financial advice, all right? I'll explain a little bit more, but that is um, averaging up or down, all right? I'll touch on that, but be patient. So, now you encounter yourself on not having a stop loss, I, if, I, especially if you're on cross, so always, always, if I, I never recommend doing leverage, but I do leverage myself, so I will be a hypocrite if I tell you don't do leverage, but I don't recommend it, I still do it full transparency, all right? This is not financial advice, all right? And if you're gonna be using leverage, do, at least do, isolate it, use a stop loss, and do not go ham on that leverage. I usually, I, I max out at 10x, or if I'm feeling extra lucky, I do 20x at most, all right? And then you already have seen it. I've been publishing my latest trades. They are at 2x, they are at 5x. I haven't even go to 10x recently, right? And why? I'm, I'm being careful at this point. I'm taking what the market is giving me. I'm multiplying it by 2 with the 2x, right? And enjoying the profits. And keep growing my wallet. All right, uh, so now that you are there, maybe you are on cross or maybe you are mostly all in, right? And now you might be getting out. Well, then you start seeing this. It's retracing, right? It's retracing. But let's do this manual so we can uh, take advantage, both learning basic trading, all right? And also learning support and resistances the easy way or the manual way. So I'm going, I am acknowledging the stops, right? Previous resistance because it had the chance to break through and it didn't. Previous resistance becomes new support. Remember, I don't know what's going on right there. I'm just suffering because I'm about to get liquidated, all right? So if you survive this and now it's going down, you have different options. First of all, on your main chart, where the main movement happened, all right, where are your uh, big support and resistances? For me, there's gonna be one here, another one here, but the most, most, most important will be my dynamic reactor along with my oscillator, right? So if I'm all in and I have nothing left, all right, this is not financial advice, if I, if I can lose it all, all right, if I can lose it all, I'd rather save something than losing it all. Why? Because when I did lost it all, I regret it so bad, and I told myself I would have gave everything, everything to go back and at least keep a little bit of that, at least. And I did have one, two, and in my case, I have four chances to break out even. I never took them, all right? Having said that, if I can partially close a position on a big resistance, and what is this a big resistance? You'll say, well, it broke. Yes, but did you know that it's gonna be breaking or, or supporting? So far, your technicals are telling you that you are uptrending. Even worse, you are going crazy on that uptrend, right? And what is it there? Let's do a vertical line right here you're still above the zero line. What has happened before? I've bounced, I've bounced, and why would it be the exception? Yes, because I had a bearish divergence, yes, but, I mean, remember, you are on the stress. 
What if it goes up and liquidates you? What is your worst case scenario? Your worst case scenario is losing it all, right? So you have nothing left to lose, right? Patient Samurai, I do believe that, brother. One way, welcome, welcome. So if you can lose it all, would, and let me ask you this honest question. Honest question, like for sure. I, I'm really interested on in what you guys, what, what's happening on your, on your mind. Because for me, I did the two things and ended up settling for always saving a portion of my money. What would you do? Would you go make or break? Or would you say, you know what, I'd rather save a little bit and then and then just then work my way to it? Because I mean, I can say it, I'm all in for this trade, but still play it out with strategy, right? So, but would you do full trade until you break even or you get liquidated? Or will you go full trade and scale it down as you go and even try to work it to profits? Let me know. Name of the game is patience. Absolutely. Also, nowhere else you'll get this level of explanation. Thank you, brother. I really appreciate you. Thank you. Obviously, thank you one way. Your technical, uh, your teaching gives confidence. Thank you, brother. Really, really appreciate it. Uh, Mr. Payne, nice man. Thanks. Glad to see everything I'm learning is looking the same as you guys. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Thanks. Uh, save a bit, uh, vas uh, vesul Vesuldion. Save a bit and get a chance to figure another day. You got it. That's the same thing. That is the same thing that I learned after getting liquidated, <laughs> right? I mean, so I had to get burned to learn that. This is the way. This is the way, brother. Absolutely. So... That is a decision that you need to take. That is not on me, right? That is on you guys. And you might confront this situation. Think always, think it twice, all right? Not more than two times, three times. One time it's rushing, two times it's thinking it correctly, and three times it's overthinking it, all right? Just think it two times. What is your worst case scenario? And are you prepared for the consequences? Thank you, Marty G. Thank you, Marty G. Thanks for learning this stuff and getting better. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Really appreciate it. So, lots of, lots of people here, but one big brain after class. We have 33. Nice. Guys, we are a collective brain on this class. That's why your opinion, your input, your comments are so, so, so important. If not, as the veterans, that's why I always salute them. That's why always I welcome the veterans because you guys make this class the best what it what it has become so thank you guys also uh for the new members keep asking questions especially those ones that you believe that they are not meaningful those are the most important please give it up hey lunar beach crypto thank you brother all right so at this point i will be going because i have learned my lesson all right well clearly not if i'm in this situation right? i am the process of learn learning it right and i will be going um all right, I rather scale it down and have a little bit more, right? Be prepared. No one is telling you this on the on the wild, but you will. I guarantee you that you will be feeling horrible when you take or you scale down and it keeps going down. Why? Because you're gonna be thinking to yourself, I I knew it. I should have never listened at OC teachings. I knew I should have waited, right? Or you know what? I knew it. I don't know what. I never trust my intuition and so on and so forth. You are going to regret it. But remember that those are your feelings talking on your head, not your head talking over your feelings. Why? Because if you get liquidated, that, that, that was the worst case scenario. There's nothing worse than that, having no money, right? So... You now have a little bit of money, so maybe closing 25%, however you want, this is only an example, not financial advice, right? Maybe to closing 25%, right? And keep going. Look at that. Then I broke to the sea line. Oof. I know I'm on the right track. Where is the next big support? Well, then look at that. Preview support, preview support, preview support. And of course, you can go. Let's take a look at what are my uh, order blocks at 
where are my uh, big uh, order blocks at? Look at that, it's soft. That previously was a high, right? So let's go in here. And, all right, that's easy peasy. Then you just go and take out maybe a 10 to uh, 10 or 20 that what is left right here, right? And you're also gonna regret it, but when it start going up in this case, you will say, hey, I knew it. I nailed it this time. I'm almost out, right? But then it started going back down and you still have cash. Now you're breaking even. For the love of God, move your stop loss to entry, right? Move it. Then took you out. That is fine. That is fine. You made it count. Yes, in this case, because we have a huge week to the upside, it took you out, but you still have what? Like majority of your account back. Yes, you did not make a buck on it, right? But at least you broke even on something like a 50% of your account, and then your, <laughs> your mistake cost you less of a full liquidation. All right, that is the first thing, like leveraging down, all right? Or, or uh, going down uh, bit by bit, right? There's another one. Hey, Mass, what's up, brother? Welcome. Uh, live to fight another, like, live to fight. Perfect, love to hear that. But what if your liquidation price is far away, like 3X times uh, on the price? All right, let, we'll talk, we're gonna be touching on that. Oh, by, by the way, I, I've made the mistake of calling DCA on leverage, all right? I need to acknowledge that and also I need to bring it to you guys. If you are on any amount of X, you are not dca -ing. Sorry to break it to you guys, but you are not dca -ing. You cannot dca on something that is not yours, right? Yes, you. I mean, technically you can, right? But what if you get wigged out? What if you get, um, what is, if uh, you have, or I'm not 100% sure now on, 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 like for example, Binance, Mexi, but I believe that you have a one year limit to make a move, right? If you don't touch that position one year, I believe that that position gets closed at whatever it is. So are you gonna risk it on a DCA? Especially when you are DCAing with a lot of money? I mean, I surely am not, right? So there's another way that I have called DCA, but on leverage, and that is when you go 3x or something like that. In that point, you need to be prepared for something, which is, what is the most amount of money that you are willing to put into that trade? I usually, of course, that usually it's better to plan it as you're gonna go moving or as you're gonna be opening that trade, all right? Uh, and, and then set up your next uh, huge impossible targets, right? And compensate your leverage for, so you don't get liquidated on that impossible target. Does that make sense? Like for example, uh, let's go on, on, on this one. Like, um, let me clear everything up and let's tackle that one because in fact, that is the next, the next thing. So I'm gonna be going up in here and I'm gonna be doing maybe a two X or something. And I'm, I want to see big support and resistances. Here we go. This is a huge support. We touched it, but when we were there, would you ever imagine that we're gonna be going down there? I mean, right now, do you expect to see a $20 AVEX? For sure, I mean, let me know. Do, do you really expect to see $20 uh, AVEX? Yes or no? No, not in a bull run. Yes, me either, right? Not really, no. But maybe 90. Yeah, I mean, me either, right? But this is part of thinking it through, right? I mean, we're going down. What if Bitcoin crashes, like, like madly crashes, right? Well, this is the next huge support. And I have nothing else below here. So maybe, remember, impossible targets. Maybe impossible target one, maybe impossible target two, maybe impossible target three. How much money am I, let's just say that I open up along, right? Let's, let's just go the other way around this time. 
So let me see where are my tools. Here they are. Let's go for this long position. Let's say that you enter a long right here at dynamic reactor. You never moved your stop loss. Now you're underwater. All right. All right. You're getting worried, but your stop loss is way below because you are at 2x or 3x or something like that. All right. Well, then it's time to figure something out. You can place a stop loss, buddy. <laughs> right? I mean, you can, step, you can still place a stop loss. All right. Maybe you're in the long run, right? Or maybe you don't want to lose that position. But, and that is the case of many of my, of my trades. But, I mean, be aware that you're taking the best decision for your wallet, all right? Like, for example, I have decided that I have uh, 3K for AVAX, right? Real story. Uh, I have decided, this is, a, this is a statement, that I have 3K US dollars for AVAX on what is left for the bull run, all right? I will be adding 3K on AVAX in this board run. Not financial advice, not financial advice. I might retract myself. I might increase that, that, that amount. I don't know, all right? So I have uh, that, um, that amount of money. And maybe I open up a 3X long in here, right? And then looking for my impossible targets. So at that point, I'm not expecting to set a stop loss, all right? I'm only looking at my liquidation point, that is uh, 215. Well, then I will be placing out of that 3,000, oh, come on, out of that 3,000, maybe I'll be uh, putting, I don't know, uh, 500, 500, or uh, I mean, this, this is huge, right? So maybe 2,000 and 1,000. And guys, do you see the issue right there? It's gonna be hilarious, but. All right, you don't see the issue. It's so obvious. I, I make my profile on entry, not exits. If I don't enter at the right target, yes, I also agree with that one, um, MSG. I absolutely, I absolutely agree with that. So the first thing is that me, my mats are done at, right? I had 3K, so how much am I placing here, right? Whatever. So let, and <laughs> this is because my 3K is what I have left to add to my position. All right, then, all right, I want to add the most amount of my, of my money right here where I do have the most amount of support, right? So maybe out of those 3K, I'm gonna place, I don't know, 500 right down here, right? Uh, 150 or 1,500, sorry, 1,500, and then the rest, 1,000 right down there, right? Impossible targets. When I get here, that's gonna be fine. I'm gonna enter, but what if I get here? Oh, look at that. I'm gonna dramatically move my stuff, my entry like down dramatically, right? And then I also, my liquidation point is gonna be almost at zero. So I have two X and I'll be very close to zero. That will probabilistically talking, that's gonna be ruling out liquidation. Probabilistically talking, not impossible improbable. Does that make sense? Perfect. So if you have low leverage, you have two ways to go. Set a stop loss, rethink your, your entry points, or set an amount of money that you're okay uh, holding for the rest of your life, <laughs> or whenever you have more, DCA more, so you get out in any re uh, retest, rebound, retrace, bounce, whatever. All right, you have to do those two chances. Of course, lower leverage always give you better flexibility than higher leverages, all right? And I mean, you can place more money, not financial advice, with lower risk and the same returns, all right? All right, we have gone over 20 minutes, uh, extended this class. Hopefully this is an important tar uh, class or topic that you guys uh, could extract a little bit of value of it. I, I mean, we, I needed to left a ton of information out of, the, out of today, but I mean, it is what it is, right? Tomorrow, tomorrow we have our, um, our win rate, and I'm so happy and I'm so excited because, and, and all right, take this with tweezers, right? Take this with tweezers. My win rate, it is on 100. That doesn't mean that I have a, an actual lifelong win rate of 100, all right? That means that I just haven't failed a trade since I restarted it on February, all right? That doesn't mean I'm perfect. 
I will fail a trade eventually, all right? Thanks, brother. But still too early, still too early. We, we need to see that retracement happen and we'll see how, how we would stand on that one. And of course, guys, this is not me, all right? This is you guys actually uh, giving the calls. Many, 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 many of the greatest uh, calls that we have had here has been with you guys. So shout out for your guys' suggestions. Shout out to bring my, to my attention those new assets, those impressive things that you, that you guys are following up. And guys, that is the importance of collective knowledge. We all came together to share knowledge, experience, and build up together, not tear down uh, each other. All right. So, guys, thank you so much because you guys make me what I am right now. You guys have shaped me into a better trader. You guys have shaped me into a better instructor. And I am doing my best to shape you guys into better traders. And also, in uh, if you guys like education, into sometime, sometime an instructor so you can teach your friends, your family, and yourself in the near future. Guys, thank you so much for this class. I really, really acknowledge its power. Love it. Yes, absolutely. You are the best, Marty G. That's why I always kind of like, yeah, Mar Marty G, I want to address something. I went a little bit harsh on you at the beginning. And that was part of, of the, right? Didn't mean to be uh, harsh or anything. I'm always friendly. <laughs> yes. I, mean, I even feel bad because I, I went like, hey, are you sure? You know, like, but I want to make a point for all of us to learn. I don't feel like that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That really kind of like, uh, gets my stress out. <laughs> and um, guys, from the bottom of my heart, thank you so much. I mean, I'm really, really enjoying life. Uh, at this part of my of my existence, hopefully you do are right. Remember that everybody's success story it's different. So the best that we can do is share details with each with each other, right, and let that other person build up their own success story. Remember, whatever it works for you, right? Not what it works for me. Whatever it works for you, because you are the protagonist in this case, right? And guys, as always. See you in a little bit, but mainly tomorrow. Mm -hmm.